Hey everybody, just back here with another video. So I was just uh, scrolling through X a little bit uh, last night and I was just kind of having a look at some of what Jugmeet Singh was posting and I thought some of it was just so ridiculous and funny. I thought it would, I just thought I would share with you because everyone deserves a laugh once in a while, right? So, I mean, it's just another, it's a, basically another smear piece by Jugmeet Singh trying to go after Pierre Polyev and even somewhat the liberals a little bit. But it's just another failed attempt. I mean, he's so bad at this. It's just, it's so funny. So the first thing he says here is, if Pierre Polyev is taking money from real estate execs who've destroyed the housing market, do you think you can trust him to fix the housing crisis? The answer is no. Well, first of all, dummy, why don't you do something right now to fix it? And if Trudeau won't do anything to fix it, vote of non-confidence pretty simple way to get your way if you wanted it if he actually gave a shit which he doesn't so there's the first thing now i don't know if pierre polyev is actually taking money from real estate executives but we do we all know that politicians do take money from corporations and high-end executives which i don't like I'm, I'm not i'm not a fan of that and if that is true then jugmeet singh has a point there that being said pierre polyev hasn't really released his plan yet because it's not election season again you want to hear his plan jug meet force a vote of non-confidence we'll have an election and he'll re reveal his plans the reason he won't reveal his plans right now is because why would he do that when trudeau could just take the idea steal it and then put it into plan for a year and a half and if it works pierre polyev just shot himself in the foot why would he do that you're not going to release the plan to the enemy right now. It doesn't make any sense. You do it during the election season so that there's only a couple months. That's not enough time for Trudeau to actually steal and implement the idea. That's why he's not saying anything. Now, that being said, even if his plan is a good one, Pierre Polyev's plan is a good one. Let's say it's, you know, hey, I'm going to build, you know, small bungalows, 100, 150 grand, 100, 150 grand so that, you know, young couples can you know, get their foot in the real estate, real in the real estate market and start their journey towards, you know, building, building wealth, right? Because that's the best way you build your wealth is by owning real estate. If that's the case, I mean, let's be honest, real estate companies are still going to make money. They're going to still sell the houses, right? And it's better for them to make money on selling a hundred, $150,000 house than not selling a 500,000 or a million dollar house because no one can afford these houses. Not to mention what you're getting for that price, it's not worth it anyway. So these high-end houses, they're not gonna be selling forever, right? So of course the real estate market benefits when the housing market is way up because they make more money, they make more money on commission. But if no one's buying houses or if people stop buying houses, which you can already see happening, they're not going to make any money. So they'd rather make a little bit of money than nothing. So I'm not really sure like, like where, where Jugmeet Singh is coming from. And then he comes here and he says his next post, this is on August 5th, by the way. And he, he says the laws written by the liberals slash conservatives are so messed up that it's becoming more and more common for Canadians to face rent eviction, which is, you know, when a landlord says, Hey, you got to move out because we're renovating. And then they don't actually renovate or sometimes they do, but it's very, very minor and they didn't really need to need you to get out in the first place. But now that you you you've been removed, they can now uh, rent this apartment or condo or house, whatever it is, to someone else and jack up the price. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, he's saying it's messed up that it's becoming more and more common for Canadians to face rent eviction or be asked to pay double their rent by corporate corporate landlords. I agree. Justin Trudeau refuses to act. Conservatives want to give corporations more power. Pretty sure corporations have actually gained quite a bit of power in the last nine years, especially during a certain pandemic, which the policies that Justin Trudeau had, Jugmeet Singh agreed with. So who gave more power to corporations, first of all? Second of all, if these laws are so bad, why do you prop up Justin Trudeau? Just get him out of there. Canadians want him gone. We're dying for an election. So give us one. No, nope, can't do that. He, he's so worried about our housing market. He's so worried about these liberals and conservatives and I'm this third party and I'm different. No, you're not. You're waiting for your pension. 
It's worth over two million bucks, by the way. That's what he's waiting for. Now, as soon as he gets that, and then you know, the, the, speaking of the real estate market, once that starts to, I'm not saying it's going to crash, but I mean, let's be honest. There's a major housing bubble here, and it's, apparently, it's one of the worst in the world. So, what comes up is going to go down. Not to mention all these interest rates that are going up starting January. There will be people who unfortunately have to default on their mortgage. They won't be able to afford it. They're already one bad thing away of happen, uh, from happening, from them losing their, their house and everything they have. Bad things happen to everybody. Now you have this raising interest rate on top of it. Not to mention the carbon tax is going to go up again in April. I mean, they're just, they're literally taxing us into poverty. And Jugmeet Singh is propping up this government. And he's not doing anything about it. Not to mention, how weak and pathetic are you to negotiate a coalition with Justin Trudeau and not even say, hey, listen, if we're going to do this, I want to see it at the table. You better put me in your cabinet. He was so weak, he couldn't even do that. I mean, it's just... It's unbelievable. I mean, every time he speaks, every time he holds a press conference, did you see the one the other week there where he's talking about, like, oh, what a great location we're at today, and I'm, we're talking, and he's, first of all, he's talking into the wrong mic. <laughs> and second of all, there is, on one of the mics, it had, like, one of those big, like, fluffy kind of uh, filters on it. Well, that's for if it's really windy, which it was. So why would you choose a place, first of all, that... On a windy day, you go right out in the open. No one can hear you. The microphone had issues. He's speaking into the wrong microphone. And then he just spews this kind of nonsense on X. And it's like, like, does anyone still take this guy seriously? And if you do, please let me know in the comment section how. I mean, this party can't even run a city. I mean, you look at what's happening. I mean, even London now, they voted in an NDP mayor, I think it was. Crimes way up. Homeless way up. Hamilton, Toronto, BC, Safe Supply Act. They can't do anything right. And, and again, this isn't like a conservative rant, like, oh, the conservatives will fix anything. But they are, generally speaking, better financially. And I know there is this populist thought of, you know, Pierre Polyev is just like the others. He's part of the, you know, agenda. And uh, listen, I'm concerned about that for sure. I'm not so convinced that that's going to happen. And the, one of the main reasons is when you get elected as prime minister, so Pierre Polyev will be our next prime minister, right? So he gets elected in. If he does not keep his promises, he will be gone in four years. Because if nothing, if, what Canadians feel, and Canadians are generally speaking very liberal. If you get liberals to come over to your side, which they have for some of them, What's going to keep them there? Well, okay, he kept his promises, and wow, there's some cheaper houses, and you know, there's less crime, and yada, yada, yada. If he doesn't do that, they're just going to go right back to the Liberal Party. Well, what's a politician's main job? It's not about policies. It's about keeping your job for as long as possible. In a very liberal country, it's going to be hard for a conservative to keep his job for more than four years. Because if he does not keep his promises, people are just going to abandon the party. They'll go right back to the liberals. And that means he's going to be out in 2029. What he wants is to be prime minister for as long as possible. So at, for the, at least for the first four years, he is going to have to do everything he can, or he'll be put on his ass in 2029. He doesn't want that to happen, but he also knows it will happen. So he has to get rid of the tax. He has to do something about immigration. He has to do something about the housing crisis. Now, that being said, will he fix the entire thing? Probably not. But Trudeau is so bad, Pierre Polyev doesn't even have to be that good. He just has to stop the bleeding, and he's going to be viewed as way better than Justin Trudeau. And that's not enough. We need a lot more help than that. But even if he were able to you know, fix, especially the housing, to build houses, even smaller houses, it's going to take a while. Hopefully they can speed up the process, and that's even if he does it. Who knows, right? But I'm telling you right now, Pierre Polyev, he has to keep his promises. I'll th I think he will keep some. He might not be able to fulfill them as much as he maybe would like, but he's going to have to stop the bleeding and then put a, at least a dent in what Trudeau's done. At least a little bit, or else he's, he's gone. And then we're right back to the liberals or the NDP. Or 
maybe, and this is what I'm hoping for, if Pierre Polyev does not do his job, I'm hoping there is a massive populist uprise. You're starting to see it in, in a lot of places in the world. Now, that being said, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I do not think that Maxim Bernier is the right leader for that party or for that movement. Maybe I'm wrong, but you know, we'll see. He's going to have a little bit more time, but he's not really doing anything right now to win people over. He's won some people over, but what, 2%? It's, it's not enough. He's not going to win. So if Pierre Polyev does falter in this next election, or after this next election for the next four years, hopefully you will then see the Canadian populace turn into an actual populist movement and some of these younger kids who will be able to vote in four years. And that's what I'm interested in seeing, because if they start to vote for the PPC, especially if they get their shit together, 2033 would then be very interesting because then you're going to have even more of the Gen Alpha, you know, the COVID kids, essentially. And I think they're going to grow up and they're going to be pretty pissed off. And if the conservatives don't get get their act together and help us, they got nowhere to go. They're not going to the NDP. They're not going liberal. They're not going conservative. Well, that's when Max and Bernie or the PPC could really strike in 2029, but especially in 2033. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just wanted to kind of point that out and just go over the uh, silly failure of an attempt of a smear job going after Pierre Polyev. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. What do you think about Jugmeet Singh? Do you, uh, do you trust anything, a, a word? Do you trust any word? Sorry, do <laughs> I can't speak today. Do you trust a single word that comes out of his mouth? I sure don't. And let me know what you think. You know, do you think that Pierre Polyev is going to keep his promises? I always love hearing your comments, uh, reading your comments, responding to them, engaging with you guys. And I really, really appreciate the uh, user engagement with my channel. Uh, please also don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. Uh, thanks again so much for watching, guys. And I'll be